The wrecks continued. More often than not, rescue attempts were made by the townspeople themselves. In fact, the bluff at Chatham Light had a small group of families situated here as wreckers. From Scrabble Town, as it was known, men launched boats to rescue and salvage foundering ships. The Scrabble Towners competed with each other to be the first to board a stranded vessel and negotiate with the captain to work the ship back into deep water before it was too badly damaged. This assistance was offered at a hefty price though, and if the vessel could not be dislodged, the wreckers still came out ahead by being first on the scene to begin the lucrative salvage. We soon met one of those wreckers, a regular Cape Cod man with a bleached and weather-beaten face within whose wrinkles I distinguished no particular feature. It was like an old sail endowed with life, too grave to laugh, too tough to cry, as indifferent as a clam. He was looking for wrecks, old logs or bits of boards and joists. When the log was too large to carry far, he cut it up where the last wave had left it, or rolling it a few feet, appropriated it by sticking two sticks into the ground crosswise above it. The schooner Ann T. Sippel from New York with coal went ashore on Shovelful Shoal Friday morning but was got off by wreckers and taken into Chatham Harbor, leaking badly. It is rumored that the wreckers got $500 for bringing the schooner into the harbor. The Chatham Monitor, 1882. I was a small boy when the SS Onondaga came ashore just north of the old Harbor Life Saving Station. For years afterwards, shoes, chocolates, white rolls of wrapping paper, just to mention a few items, would appear mysteriously in the homes of local people who had helped in the salvage operations. Many a house was re-shingled with what the tide brought in. Joshua Atkins Nickerson II. At North Chatham in 1907, the liner Onondaga went hard aground. Chatham wreckers refloated her and brought her to Boston, where they proudly posed for photographs and, no doubt, spent some of their lucrative wages. But local legend says that not all wrecking here in Chatham was so straightforward. The Moon Cussers were wreckers who aggressively disoriented and grounded ships by waving a lantern in the dunes on sandbars or on the neck of a horse that they walked up the beaches. They are said to have cussed the moon because they could only ply their trade effectively on the blackest of nights. Without any moonlight, a ship might mistake a wavering light to be a beacon on the shore or a fellowship at sea, driving through safe water. As in all lands where there are many people, there are some thieves. So in all seas much frequented, there are some pirates. Captain John Spence. The benefits of this wrecking business are hard to miss in today's town's records. Apparently, Chatham's first stone wall was constructed of pavement blocks purchased at a shipwreck auction. When the steeple of the first congregational church was struck by lightning in 1887, it was restored by David Edwards, who used the mast from the bark R.A. Allen wrecked out on Monomoy during the same storm. Legendary Shore Road resident Good Walter constructed his house over time from the pieces of over a dozen shipwrecks. The bare bones of the wrecks were eventually swallowed by the sands, but it wasn't uncommon for them to reappear years later after the erosion of a particularly strong nor'easter or winter storm. Sometimes they would even refloat themselves, becoming derelict craft until they restranded somewhere else up the beach. It could well be the ribs of the schooner Grecian that reappeared during the April Fool's Day blizzard of 1997. On December 6, 1885, the Grecian grounded on the outer bar opposite today's Coast Guard station. The crew had taken to the rigging and were slowly freezing to death. George Bloomer, captain of the Lifesavers, launched two boats, 
But with a southeast wind and a deadly current, the men of the Grecian were forced to jump for the boats as they sped by. In this way, the crew were brought to safety after several passes. Records show that the Grecian came ashore and went to pieces shortly afterwards, but her heavy timbers lay exposed for years in the sand before being buried. <laughs>